Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a lovely day. So, do you have your own custom 3D environment that you want to put inside of Yinyan? Let's say you probably commission a 3D environment from someone and you want to put that into Vinyan. Or maybe you made your own custom environment with Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, or any other 3D program that you have. You made your own custom environment that you want to put into Vinyan so that way you can use it for VTubing purposes or maybe for personal use. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to basically be teaching you how to basically convert your FBX world file or your environment and take that and we're going to convert it into a Vignan world model format so that way we can use it for Vignan. So rather than using uh, shoving our environment into the VSF avatar file, we can make sure that our character, um, our avatar is basically optimized as well as keeping the world also optimized as well, just a balance basically. Now. I'm going to start off with telling you what are the requirements you're going to be needing for this. First and foremost, now for me, I am currently using Unity 2020.3.0, which is the same version Tracking World uses. So if you want to put your own custom environments inside of Tracking World, then I recommend using this version. If you want to use the version that I believe maybe Suvadrill is using as of this current time, it may change in the future, but as of this current time, I believe Suvadrill is using Unity 2020.3.40. Um, I'll make sure that in the description below that the these two versions I just mentioned are downloadable, the direct links for it, so you don't get lost. Um, so check them out. Um, now, I don't recommend using 2019.3.40. 4.31, that's the version that you use for VSF avatars. It's better that you use Unity 2020 just to make sure to prevent any errors or weird issues basically. Just to just to make sure you're good. Now, what you're going to then need is the newest version of the Vignon SDK. Now keep in mind that the Vignon SDK does have updates, so please check regularly after. So if Vignon updates basically Make sure to double check if the Vignon SDK also updated just to make sure. Um, but as of this, uh, as of the version right now for this tutorial, I am using pretty much 0.0.11 0, uh, uh, the Vignon SDK. Now I'm going to go ahead and import the SDK first. So I'm going to do that. Like I said, it may change in the future. So if let's say, I don't know, 0. 0. 13 pops up then and that's the newest version as of your time then make sure you download that it just depends on what time you're watching the video in now for me i'm going to be importing also the um the uni vrm package the reason why is because uh, my current environment i set up as a unity package uh when i was uh, transferring files over from my computer so my setup uses Mtune. Now, if you prefer, you can actually use whatever version, um, whatever shader um, you want. So let's say you want to use Poyomi because you preferred some settings, or maybe you want to make it more realistic. For example, whichever type of style you want to go for, um, whichever shader you choose, uh, pretty much any shader should be supported, except. URP and HDRP shaders. Now, uh, the reason why is because Vignan itself uses the legacy shader and it's quite impossible to have a sort of toggle system for the pipeline basically. I mean, there may be a way, but for Vignan, it's kind of impossible basically. So in case you're wondering why does Vignan not have the, that support, the, the pipelines, it's a bit of very tricky to implement. So if you prefer having HDRP for your realistic sh shader or URP, I would recommend having your own custom solution. If you by any chance are more anime style, like your more tune style, you do not need HDRP or URP. Um, those pipelines are primarily best if you're going more realistic than tune shader. If you want to look more tune style, um, that kind of depends on your model and what shader you prefer, but I, this is not what this tutorial is about. This tutorial is about environments, but I just want to at least address that in case anyone's curious. But either way, uh, what I'm going to do now, actually before I import my world, I'm going to quickly kind of give you an overview on the Vignan SDK, which I'll make sure to link in the description as well, Suvadrail's tutorial on the Vignan SDK. But basically there's all these scripts here, all these scripts, um, Basically, you can add them as components. So let's say I import some sort of box, like 3D object. Um, I add a cube, for instance, just an example. 
uh, just want to pull up an example here. Basically, you can add a component and basically uh, whatever scripts are here basically that you want to use, let's say edible item, uh, you would type that in, edible item. So Vignon edible item, you can add the script there. So basically these scripts, you add them as components to your 3D object basically. Um, so that's basically what we're going to do. There's also the world uh, script. This is the one we're going to be needing. You can also add Vignon camera if you so desire, but we're going to be needing the world one. There's also the uh, world lights light map if you want. Light maps are definitely nice if you want to make sure that your light is very consistent and it's like stay in place basically. Um, or once again there's like other stuff that you can do with it but I'm not gonna get into light maps uh, in this tutorial but that is an option that you can use. I would um, I would say depending on your environment and depending on how it's set up I would recommend light maps um, as it just makes sure that the lighting doesn't get all wonky basically um, and then it basically stays consistent so make sure you probably check that out but either way I'm not gonna get into that so basically I'm gonna go ahead and delete this cube and I'm going to import my environment real quick so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go here and I'm going to click and drag and put my file in here now for yours, if you already have an FBX file, make sure you import your FBX so you can right click, create a folder, um, you can add your FBX uh, environment, make sure you add your textures as well and set up your, your materials, um, which pretty much if you have if you have converted an FBX file to VRM before, it's pretty much kind of like that except you forget the VRM conversion part, you just set up the materials basically. But give me a moment uh, as my stuff is basically um, importing into Unity right now, so it may take a bit. Alright, so now I've imported my world. This is basically what mine looks like, and it's really bright, goodness gracious. Um, I would probably delete these lights here. Actually, I'll, I keep that one. Um, but yeah, here's my environment here. It's, it's, an old, um, it's an old environment I have. Um, quite outdated, but it's, it's something basically. But basically, uh, you would import your FBX file. Now, for my case, mine's all over the place. I had them in the PMX format. Now, there's a thing I actually want to address about the PMX format. So, this old setup, I made this in Blender. Um, so, I used Sweet Home 3D to help me with planning it. Then, I used Blender to make my entire setup from scratch. And then, after I did that, I then convert to PMX because at the time I relied on PMX for all my stuff. I don't use PMX as much anymore, but I did want to address that if you plan on taking an MM like basically an MMD prop basically. Now mine mine is not made uh from somebody else. I made this entirely from scratch. But if you plan on actually taking the MMD environments from DeviantArt or anything like that, if you're going to take those environments and put them into your own world, do not do that. Especially if you're going to use it for VTubing, because VTubing, you're going to probably get donations, you're going to commercialize off of your works. I mean, if you are not going to make donations, sure you could, but even then, I would not recommend it. Uh, you may get in trouble with the uh, original creators of the environment, and you just don't want to deal with that. So, I recommend please don't touch anything MMD related. You can probably still use PMX Editor if you so desire for editing, I guess, but I would not recommend touching PMX Editor or touching any MMD prop. Just stay on the safe side legally. PMX Editor has crazy rules, and also um, MMD stuff. You, you don't want to get into the legal crazy stuff basically I'm, I'm just trying to save you but either way um basically once you have your setup here basically for my case i have them where they're all separate files because back on my old laptop um i could not i for some reason i couldn't been able to merge these all into one mesh basically um or the fact that i wind them as um grabables, I guess, for a tracking world, but this is old though. But basically what I have to do is I have to create an, um, an empty game object, so that way I can put all these underneath uh, game objects, so that way it's basically one thing. Because if I, let's say, just selected plant and I export it as a world prop, then it's probably not going to work and it'll just It'll only export the plant and not the entire thing. So please make sure everything's under a game object if you have separate uh, separate objects like this, basically. 
if by any chance yours is just a single uh, FBX mesh, basically, you should be fine. And just also to quickly show you as well, uh, for my case, I have my FBX file here. And basically, I have my... Um, Basically, I have all my material set up here, so my material folder is here, and then my texture folder is all here and such. Uh, just to kind of show you how to basically like sort of set it up. You don't need to set up legacy blend shape normals unless your environment has blend shapes, but mine doesn't. And make sure you keep it as generic. You do not need it as humanoid. It'll just cause issues. So keep it as generic, basically. Now once you do that though, um, the other thing as well, uh, which is recommended to make sure your model doesn't fly away, is to set up a mesh collider. A mesh collider basically allows uh, character models to basically not fall off from the world, so but that way they don't fall into infinity. Uh, or infinite basically so I would recommend that that's why I did for my setup especially with tracking world because my character was flying all over the place but yeah um so just make sure you set up a mesh collider if you can you don't have to for everything so for example my sky dome doesn't need one but my bedroom needed one so do that now the next thing as well is we need to set up a Vignon world prop here so we're gonna look up Vignon and we're going to set it to world. So right here. So this is the Vignon world here. Now there is the skybox material that we can select. For my case, I have one. So I'm going to set it to the, uh, the sky dome one I have here, basically. So you could do that. I can actually delete mine, though. Um, I can delete my sky dome, actually, because I don't need it. But either way, um, actually... Is my sky dome selectable? Yeah, it's right here. So delete that. All right, there you go. Um, so basically, that's what you can do as skybox material, or you can just not have one. Um, but either way, um, whether you want one or not, you can add a skybox material if you for spawn point. Basically, the spawn point. Um, basically, you will have to set up some sort of like object. Uh, or whether it's a bone or some sort of object to basically tell the tell Vignon where do you want your character to spawn? So let's say for instance Let's say I want to set up um, Let's say some sort of sphere right here, and I want to set it to zero and Let's say I'm going to uh, have this as my spawn point. Let's just say for example um, We can have it so that way this could be our spawn point. So spawn point will be this object here. Like let's say for example if you want that sure. I would probably have it where this game object here. So basically right here this game object will be my spawn point. Uh, and it will be set to 000 if you want. But for my case it acts a bit dumb. Let me just go ahead and set that to 00 real quick. And then set all these to 000 real quick. There you go. There you go, much better. Um, Alright then, so, once you have your spawn point set up and you make sure that your game object is set to 0, because zero, zero, that's where we want it to spawn, now what we're going to do, uh, you know, after you set up your materials and all that, then what we're going to do is we're going to export this as a Vignon world prop, and then we're going to give it a little test run. So we're going to go to Vignon SDK on the top here, we're going to export it as world, and then you're going to name it wherever the heck you want. So I'm going to just call this bedroom model, um, and then I'm going to then, which I'll make sure it's video edited here, um, but basically I'm going to imp I'm going to export my Vignon world prop uh, to Vignon folder, then I'm going to go into world, and basically there's a world folder in Vignon, you're going to export into that folder basically. And then you're going to give it some time to process it basically. And once you're done, you're going to then open up Vignon and we're going to give it a little test run. So, before we test out our new Vignon world, there is something I do want to address. If by any chance your Vignon world for some reason does not export at all, like when you check back at the folder where you export and if for some reason you do not see it exported, it means that you probably have something going on with your console. So please make sure to go to your Unity console and check to see what errors are there. For the most time, if by any chance you either have a missing script, so let's say some sort some part of your world has like a missing script component because maybe uh, a script went missing or something like that 
please make sure that you delete any of those missing script errors. And also, if by chance you added, let's say, another script that, you know, is found, but for some reason is not support in the Vignon world or the Vignon SDK thing, um, I would recommend please make sure you remove that script. If for some reason you want a script to be whitelisted to the Vignon SDK, please talk to Suvadrill about that. But either way though, for the most part, it should be able to work if you follow those steps I provided. Where you set up your spawn point, and as well as you set up your skybox, which is of course optional if you want it or you don't want it, whichever one. Either way, we're going to go into the load world, and we're going to go ahead and load the world that we made. And for me, my world has exported, which is really great. Um, of course, it doesn't look its best. As I said, it is an old, it's a old, old world that I don't really use as much anymore. But you can see how it exported. And yes, I would recommend for this world, if I were to continue developing it, I would recommend having light maps to make sure that weird shadow stuff like this does not happen. But that's okay, though. I That's okay. That's, um, I'm, I don't do this. I'm, I will remake my world. But either way... That's basically how you make a Vignon world, basically. Um, now, um, as well, if you want this world to be loaded by default in Vignon, what you're going to do is you're going to go to Settings, you're going to go into the Node Graph. And then what you're going to then do is you're going to then go add a new graph. You're going to then go into, uh, you're going to go click on Application Start. And after that, you're going to click and drag these little node things together. You're going to click on load and you're going to load in the file that you want to load by default. Now, of course, if you want some, let's say, for example, if your world loaded, you want like some magical particles to happen or something like that. You can actually have it where you click on world loaded here and then you can have one, you know, basically once this world loads, something happens basically. You can have it where, I don't know, uh, your character yeets or something, just a, just a random example, um, something like that, see? <laughs> yeah, basically it <laughs> just happened to me, just a, a yeet when it's loaded. <laughs> And by the way, this is the reason why I told you to add the Mesh Collider, because that way your character can actually interact with the world, basically. Especially if it gets yeeted. But either way, though, um, I hope that helps you out on understanding how to set up Vignon World props, files, whatever the heck. Uh, so that way you can have your own custom Vignon world. Now, of course, if you do not have your own custom environment, I highly recommend please check out Sweet Home 3D. I plan on making a tutorial on it very soon, but it is a tutorial. Um, but Sweet Home 3D is uh, it's basically a program that's, you know, once again, really nice to have, uh, especially if you don't make your own custom worlds and you just want something sort of Roid and PMX editor-like when it comes to um, environment creations. Of course, I hope in the future there'll be more programs that can create environments, uh, or some, have, like, some sort of system, like V-Room, but either way, though, um, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. I'll put my social down here. And um, also, if by any chance you ever have any other Vignon related issues, I heavily recommend please join Suvadrill's Discord server as you can be able to basically contact, uh, get close in contact with Suvadrill so you can ask any other questions. Or maybe you can even ask for certain features to happen. Let's say, I don't know, uh, you can have something like... Um, a uh, mini game in Vignon or something like that. I don't know, which, whichever it is. But either way, I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!